Welcome to another message from C3 Mumbai. Coming up. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. That's the secret. It's there, it's yours, it's won, it's done, it's finished. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Okay, so uh, faith and life. Philippians uh, 4 verse 4, I'm going to preach from this scripture. Let, check out, I'm going to be talking about joy. And the title of this sermon is The Joy Paradox. The Joy Paradox. 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 But here's the scripture. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Now, um, I, this would only make sense to the Christians who have been Christian for a really long time. But whenever I read this scripture, there's a song that starts in my head. Anyone know the song? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Okay, whatever. Okay, it's just it's, it's, uh, that song. Rejoice. 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 And again I say rejoice. Oh, well, that's right. Uh, they should be singing those older songs. The older songs are better. Anyway, so rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. To rejoice. So, so this is a crazy scripture. I mean, think about this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice always. And this word rejoice, I mean, he says it twice in this scripture. It's like a doing word. It's like to rejoice or to be glad. So Paul's like saying, rejoice. Like, make a decision to be glad. He's, he's literally instructing his, his, his readers to be glad, which is interesting. It would seem that Paul, making this statement, is assuming that to be glad takes an active decision. Amongst difficulties. Amongst difficulties to be glad. But here's the deal. He's not just talking about joy here, alone. Because it's almost like you could walk into life and say, well, okay, so I'm going through a hard time. I'm just going to make a choice to be happy. Is, is that what you're saying? I'm just going to make a choice. So, so I'm feeling bad right now. I'm not going to do a show of hands. But maybe you're going through a difficult moment right now. And, you're, and, and, and me coming up to you or re- and it says, in the Bible, Gorov, it says... Be glad. So just be glad. And you're, like, and you're like, oh, oh, well, I don't feel glad, so I feel bad because I don't feel glad. Right? It's like, well, and sometimes when you read the Bible, it can be a bit like that. You're like, oh, well, I don't, feel, I don't feel glad right now. I don't feel so happy right now. I don't feel like it's, it's really anything sort of going on for me right now. So, and then, but then there's this compounding guilt that happens because you're like not doing what the Bible tells you. Anyway, no, is it just me? Then you're like, oh, I sat down this morning, opened my Bible to read my Bible, like I want to be a good person, and, and look at me, I'm feeling more guilty than I did before. I forget this, I shut my Bible or turn off my phone and check out whatever else is going on on my phone. It's difficult to make a choice to be glad, but it almost seems like this would be a form of sadism, like Paul is kind of a little bit mad to not accept the reality of his situation and face what he's actually going through and 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 just and just say oh let's just be glad just rejoice but if you look at this closely at this scripture it says rejoice in the rejoice in the what what's it say in the lord rejoice in the lord always now that's different that's different it's not just talking about rejoicing by itself so, so rejoice by itself is kind of like a verb that's like a doing word that you do, that you would do. He's like causing, he's telling someone to do something, rejoice. But he's not just saying rejoice. He's not just saying be happy, Simon, even though you're sad, be happy. And I've read books that say that. Just, you know, if you're going through a bad time, you just be happy. Like make a choice, man. He's not just saying that. He's saying rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Now this is important. This is really important. This is where you're going to find the joy. This is where you're going to find the ability to rejoice. This is where you're going to find the ability to be glad. Where you're going to be able to take action on your circumstances and actually live out this verb, rejoice. You'll find yourself empowered. And not just sometimes, but always. 
That's what we're going to be talking about today. Not just sometimes, but always. Here's the paradox, and this is why I entitled this sermon The Joy Paradox, because as Paul wrote this, it was most likely that he was chained by the hand to a soldier who was with him 24-7. If he wasn't chained to a soldier, he was, he was literally watched by a sentinel every movement. He was in jail. And here's Paul, right? He's writing a letter to the people in Philippi, which he had planted a church 13 years prior. And he couldn't get back to because he was so busy or he was in jail. He, would, he just couldn't get back. He kept on having to send his guys over there. And he, here's Paul who's in jail and he's also at the end of his life. Like Paul has preached. He's done his thing. He's at a place in his life now where he's like in the golden years. This is like the point of his life where he should be sailing where he should be like happening. It should be all good for him now. He should be spending time with his grandkids, plenty of money in the bank, plenty of stuff. He's made it in life. This guy was placed for that, but he's chosen this life. Now he's ended up in jail. He's writing to the, Philipp the people in... I was going to say the Philippines. <laughs> he's writing to the people in Philippi. He's saying, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. It's almost like, well, no, hold on a second, Paul. Judging by your situation, they should be writing to you telling you to be happy but he's telling them to be happy Paul's on to something it's a paradox what had happened to Paul was unfair what had happened to Paul was unjust what had happened to Paul was counterproductive to what he was actually trying to achieve he was a church planner I couldn't imagine I was away for like four weeks I felt like I'd left my baby in Mumbai there's this church I felt like I was like I hope I still have a church when I get back I trusted everyone to do it, and, and, but it's like, it's scary. Paul had churches all over the place that he couldn't get to because he was either so busy or, or and, and it took off on him like crazy. I mean, this church was not a little church that he had left behind in Philippi. It was like thousands of people. It was thousands of people. It was like droves and droves of people that he was trying to lead from prison, chained to a sentinel. Crazy, right? And this was also below Paul's status in his community. He was, he was, before he met Christ, Paul was at the top of the pile. Let's put it in Indian terms. He was like a Brahmin priest at the very top, like the, the Brahmin priest that sits at that golden temple. I don't know. Whatever the Brahmin, whoever the most high guy is in India. Maybe it's that guy who makes the, the, the noodles. What's that guy? Oh, yeah, that, that, that guy. He makes noodles while he's in a... Lotus position or whatever. But see, see, uh, <clears throat> he was like at the top of the pile. This, this guy had all of the connections. He had all of the wealth. He, he, was, he was born into the right family. He, I, mean, he, I mean, he talks about it in, in the Bible. If you read the book of Philipp, Philippians, if you read the book of Philippians, you'll see that this guy was like the guy. And he met Christ, but he gave it all up. He, he gave it all up. And here he is. My papers are mixed up. Because I had to leave my iPad with Rachel. Because the kids had to watch the Wiggles. He got beaten. It, he was ashamed of, I mean, it was a shameful position that he was in. It was a humiliating position that he was in. And yet he's talking about joy. He's talking about joy. And he's old. In a po point of his life which should have been his legacy years. At the moment we've got a lot of baby boomers across the world who are, who are in a place of, 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 of uh, conflict, inner conflict and, and, and pain and hurt because maybe life just hasn't worked out the way it should have done. Where they're thinking, I should be in my, my years right now where I, I'm like shining, but life hasn't gone. I should be in my legacy, my legacy years right now, but I ain't. You know, some of our parents may be struggling with that. Where times are still tough, times are still hard and still can't get, but, but, but here, here's Paul. He's in prison in a time when it shouldn't have been, he shouldn't have been in prison, but he's in prison. You know, the reason why this is a paradox, why joy, the joy that, that Paul is talking about is a paradox is because we generally connect our, 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 our happiness and our joy with our circumstances, 
right? It's called the pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness. I mean, we, 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 do we not sort of spend our entire lives uh, like trying to improve our circumstances so that we can get from here to here? And we can, we can, we can live, we, we base our dreams on these things, do we not? I mean, th- this w- is what drives us to, to do what we do. It can drive us in our success. It's be like, I want to get here. So in order to get here, I need to do this, this, and this. And then once I get there, it, that will be where, when I'm in that position, then, 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 you watch, I'll be happy then. I, you know, we'll even, we'll even put up with pain, we'll put up with suffering, we'll put up with all sorts of stuff in order to get from here to here. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with, with pursuing what God has put on your heart to do. I ain't having a shot at that, okay? Just get me, get me right there. I, 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 am, I am also one that, that has ambitions and wants to do what God has called him to do, but, but, but life doesn't always go according to what we thought it would. Just like it hadn't for Paul. I don't think he expected to be in jail like he was. He was put in jail for no reason. He was actually not even, he didn't need to be in jail. He was unfairly put in jail. He, he, he was kept there by, it was corruption that got him in jail and corruption that was keeping him in jail. It's a paradox when we begin to think about it. It's like, hold on, what is Paul talking about? He's in jail, he's in the worst circumstances. How can he be talking about joy when his circumstances are so bad? I don't even know if I would follow him because I wouldn't want to go into jail like him. Who is he to talk about what he's talking about? Right? He's not, he's not like successful. Who's he? It's because it doesn't match up with our human perspective on happiness. There's this song by a guy called Kid Cuddy. Anybody heard of Kid Cuddy? Okay, a few of you, all right, some of you. He wrote this song, it's it's literally called Pursuit of Happiness. Here's the lyrics, it says, I'm on the pursuit of happiness, and I know everything that shines ain't always going to be gold. Hey, I'll be fine once I get it, yeah, I'll be good. You want me to sing it to you? You ready? I'm on the pursuit of happiness and I know everything that shine ain't always gonna be gold. Hey, I'll be fine once I get it. Yeah, I'll be good. You want to sing it with me? No, just okay. I'm just gonna. You, you're, you've heard the song? You may have heard the tune. I'm on the pursuit. He's a, like a rapper, so it's like you got to do this. He's black. I'm not black. I'm a white guy. I know it. Okay. He wrote this song, it's called Pursuit of Happiness, and in brackets got Nightmare. And if you read the rest of the song, it's a really sad song. It's about him struggling with his substance abuse, him, him not over, uh, you know, and, and just kind of, but he's going to be okay because he's on the pursuit of happiness. It's driving him. I'll be, co- I'll be okay once I get there, once I get there, once I get there. And here's Paul at the end of his life in jail, chained to a to a soldier where it's, it's, it's like it doesn't match up it's a paradox this song put Kid Cudi on the map on Spotify alone it's like it's, got, it's had 9.1 million listens that's just on Spotify I, don't, I mean I only knew that because I looked at it on Spotify I was like man but why? why why do people like that song it's because because people relate to it they're like yeah well I'm also on my pursuit to happiness when I get there I'm going to put up with everything that I've got to go through in order to get there right we can relate to that song it's like yeah I'm on my pursuit to happiness as well yeah we're all pursuing that place we're all pursuing that thing we're all pursuing the circumstances and we'd be good when we get it we'll be good when we get it So we'll put up with whatever in that pursuit. But here's Paul preaching from prison to his church in Philippi at the end of his life talking about a joy that surpasses everything he has ever known. And he had everything. And look what he says about his everything. Why don't we put up Philippians 3 verse 7 to 9. 
But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever were gains. And just like for time, I haven't. I reckon you should read this. You should get out the book of Philippians. Oh, man. Jet lag is affected my tongue. Philippians, you should get out the book and have a read of it. You'll see Paul lists in terms of he was a Jew of Jews. He, he, he had it all. And he says, you know what? I had it all, but whatever were gains for me, I consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. What is it about Christ that would make a man like this say this from prison? What has Christ got? And then he says, after saying, uh, Christ Jesus, my Lord, for, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage. I consider everything that I had as garbage. And, and this, you know, uh, the, the guys who translate the Bible, they're a little bit um, formal people. You know, they're formal kind of people. They're very straight sort of guys. And they had trouble uh, with translating that word garbage because Paul actually said crap. He literally said poop. Sugar, honey, iced tea. Okay, that's what he said. They censored the Bible. You know the Bible has been censored in some places? But he's basically saying, I consider everything that I had, all of the wealth, all of the connections, everything I had, all of my place in society, all of my respect, all that I had, I consider all of that poop. Isn't that interesting? That I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, meaning the law of the Bible. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from doing all of the right sort of things and having all the right sort of stuff and putting and making everyone is sort of impressed with me and making sure that I'm keeping up with appearances and all of that sort of stuff. Not having that kind of thing that comes from that, but, 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 but that which is through... What's the word? I'm keeping you awake here. Faith. That which is through faith. That which is through me being awesome. No. Faith, dependence, reliance. Putting our hope in Christ in every moment, in every circumstance, in everything that we walk through in life. That which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Hey, Nitin, how are you, mate? You okay? Good to see you. Hey. No. Just saying hello. Okay. The pursuit of joy in Christ. What Paul is basically saying is I gave up my pursuit of happiness and I've pursued one thing, Christ. That's what he's saying. And you've got, to pay, you've got to pay attention to this. And here's the reason why is that there is a man sitting in jail preaching and people are listening to him thousands of people are listening to him going we want to hear what this guy has got to say because we know it works because we've also experienced the same joy we know what he's talking about hands up you know what he's talking about it's okay you don't have to i mean it's almost like should i put up my hand i'm not sure but this is true what is it that you're pursuing for the sake of happiness but every time you get there the goal just keeps on moving every time you get there you're like I, I'm here I'm at the top of what I thought was the top but now I can see a new level that I want I'm, I, I want that now it's like or, or you, you, you feel like this depression coming on you it's like man I thought I would be happy here but I ain't Anybody know what I'm talking about? Paul's like, it's all garbage. It's like, it's all garbage compared to Christ because that is my pursuit. And here's a man sitting in jail who's saying, look at me, where I am. I'm in jail. I'm in chains. I'm, I'm, I'm bound here. But I know this joy in my circumstance. And it's almost as if he's saying, 
I would choose my circumstance with Christ over what I used to have. That's what he's almost saying. There's got to be something about Christ. There's got to be something about Christ. And the pursuit of Christ that produces something in us that we cannot produce ourselves, nor can any circumstance, nor can every, any situation, nor can any networking, nor can any of all the stuff that we're, we're trying to go after. I'm telling you something, there is something in Christ that will make you happier than you can ever imagine. In this city of dreams, it's almost sad sometimes that they call it a city of dreams because when you begin to look around, for all of those who make it, for all of those who make it, there are so many people with broken dreams. There are so many people who had dreams but just got old trying to make the dream happen, but it's just not happened. There's so many people who are ripped off. There are so many people that who, who, who once upon a time thought a whole lot more, but their creativity just got smashed and smashed and smashed and smashed again to the point where they're like just producing whatever needs to be produced to survive. City of dreams. It's a nice thing to say about Bombay. I love Bombay. I love this city. I, I live here. This is my home. But I'm telling you something. It's, it's more a city of broken dreams if you ask me. It's more a city where the realization that business and money is what rules and reigns and that everybody else just must bow down. I'm telling you something, it does something to your soul. I'm telling you something, it does something to, to the inner man inside of you. When you, com you constantly, it doesn't matter, even I think even the man at the top of the pile, whoever that man is, would say, It's not what I thought it would be. But there's this guy called Paul who wrote like most of the New Testament from jail. From jail. Most of it was written from jail. Most of it was written from a place of suffering. There's got to be something about Christ that if we haven't seen it yet, that we've got to see it. There's got to be something about this, this Holy Spirit in us as we, that we receive when we, when we invite Him in and begin to believe that He begins to empower us to get through the most crazy stuff, the most craziest of circumstances, the worst of the worst. He begins to empower. And whatever person, wherever, wherever you sit in society, where He begins to come in and show you and help you, Listen to what he says in chapter 4, verse 12 to 13. He says this, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. He's been in both. What he's saying is, I know what it is to be incredibly wealthy. I also know what it is to have not much at all. He was saying this because basically in jail he couldn't raise an income. And he all of a sudden had to rely on people to give him gifts, monetary gifts, in order for him to survive in jail. And I, I could imagine from time to time being stuck in jail, it takes a bit of work to raise funds. Anyone who raises funds would know money don't come from trees, although it would be awesome if it did. Um, even a farmer would, would say, no, it doesn't come from the trees, it comes from work. And, and Paul, Paul was in a place where he couldn't work anymore, he was stuck in jail. He can only write letters and, well, it's, it's hard to raise funds from writing letters, right? So he was in need. He was in need. He was like, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I've been in that situation too. Paul, I've learned the secret of being content in, every, in any and every situation. Learned the secret 
to be content in any and every situation. That sounds like strength to me. <laughs> it's funny in this city where, you know, like it's like, it's almost like the person who has all the money is like the strong one. You take away that money and it would be interesting to see how strong they really are. And Paul is like, I have some strength here that no matter what my situation is, it can't be argued with. You can put me through it. Because I've found the secret to contentment in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And here it is. Here's the secret. I want you to read this with me. I can do all things, all this. Sorry, let's start again because that was just bad timing. Okay, you ready? Ready? You ready to say it with me? I can do all this through him who gives me strength. That's the secret. What, is there some sort of, is there some sort of like, you know, like, is there, is there, is there like a formula? Is there, is there something that I need to do? Is there like a, is there a ritual? Do, who do I need to go and give an offering to? What do I need to do in order to get this kind of contentment? It's just in Christ. Simply in believing. I can do all this through Christ who gives me Anybody want that strength? I'm, 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 I'm on it. Like, you want this strength or what? Like, you want it? It's there. It's there. It's yours. It's won. It's done. It's finished. It's yours if you want it. I mean, look at this. In Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, he says this. He says, don't be anxious about anything. You've got to read this book, okay? Read this book. It's a great book, Philippians. Don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by, by prayer and petition. Just praying. Petition means asking. Just keep asking. You can ask God anything. With thanksgiving... C3 Mumbai is a church in the heart of India's commercial capital where a diverse group of people brought together to worship God and to pass on the hope of salvation by grace that we freely received. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram or tweet us on our handle at C3Mumbai.